In this video, I'm going to show you how to update your Instamember plugin. There are two ways for you to identify whether or not your plugin needs to be updated. The first is by logging into your WordPress dashboard, going to the left navigation bar and clicking Instamember. Once you click Instamember, you will be brought to the Instamember dashboard. And on the right hand side of the dashboard, you'll see a message box that says latest news. This message box gives us a notification that there is a new version released. The second way for you to tell that the Instamember plugin needs to be updated is that WordPress gives you an indicator anytime there are new software versions available. So if we click on the update indicator, it tells us a couple of things. The first thing it tells us is that we do in fact have the latest version of WordPress installed. So that one we don't have to worry about. The second section is for your plugins. Anything under this section means that there is a new version available. And as you can see, Instamember is one of the plugins that has a new version. It says here that I have version 1.15 installed and that I can update to 1.16.1. But before we update the plugin, we first need to make sure that our WordPress files are backed up just in case we lose some information. So let's go to the left navigation bar and find plugins. Once we've found plugins, let's scroll over to add new. Once you've clicked the add new tab, you should be brought to the install plugins page. This page allows us to search for plugins or upload plugins that are currently downloaded on our computer. So in the search bar, we want to type in backup. Next, we want to click the Search Plugins button. Once the search is complete, you will see a list of all of the plugins that contain the word backup. One of the plugins that I use quite often to backup my WordPress website is called Online Backup for WordPress. And it has a rating of 4 out of 5 stars, which is pretty good. Another plugin that I recommend is the Updraft Plus WordPress Backup and Restoration. But for my backup today, I am going to use Online Backup for WordPress. So let's click Install Now. The pop-up here just wants us to confirm that we really want to install this plugin, so I'm going to click OK. Once the plugin has been installed, you'll get a message that says Successfully Installed. The next step is to click Activate Plugin. Once the plugin has been installed, we want to go to the left navigation bar and look for it. It will be titled Online Backup. So let's go to the left navigation bar and locate Online Backup. We want to click on the tab. And because this is the first time that this plugin has been activated, it says that a backup has never been run for this website. So the first thing we want to do is go to Online Backup Settings. In order to use this plugin, you have to set up an online account with Online Backup, and you can register for free by clicking on the link. We're going to right-click and then open it up in a new tab because we don't want to close out our dashboard. Once that new tab is open, you'll see that we've been brought to the page that says Create an Account. So let's scroll down and we want to accept the terms of use. Once we've accepted the terms of use, we can begin setting up our account. The first thing we need to do is set up a username. The next step is to add our full name. You'll need to enter an email address in order to receive your notifications. If you do not want to receive their news or information about upcoming products, click No. If, however, you do not mind receiving news or information about their upcoming products, you can click Yes. Select your time zone, and then you must enter a password. Your password must at least be eight characters long, and it recommends for added security that you mix it up with uppercase, lowercase, and numbers. 
Once you've entered your password and retyped it to confirm that you've entered your password correctly, there is a CAPTCHA. Simply type in the letters or the text as you see it. If you have read and agree with the privacy policy, click yes. If you want to read the privacy policy before accepting it, simply right click and open your privacy policy up in a new tab and it gives you all the ins and outs of their privacy policy. Now we can click the create an account button. It says that the account was successfully created. You must provide validation by clicking on the link that they will send you via email. Once you have clicked on the link that they have provided via email, your account will be successfully validated and you can click here to log in. So let's check to make sure that the account is working correctly. And because we've never used this, it says that there are currently no new entries to show. So let's go back to our WordPress database. And we want to use the username and password that we just created for our online backup. Once you've entered the username and password, you'll see that you get a notice. And it's telling you that this is the last chance for you to configure your encryption. Once you've connected the plugin to the online vault, you will not be able to change your encryption settings without disconnecting the plugin and deleting all of your backed up files. So we want to scroll down and go to encryption type. Currently, it's set by default to none. We want to change it to the recommended, which is AES-128. Next, we want to set up an encryption key. Your encryption key acts just like a password. It can be anything you want it to be. What I recommend is using a combination of letters and numbers for added security. And if you want to ensure that you're typing in your information correctly, you can simply check show the security key. Once all of your information is inputted correctly, click the connect button. The plugin has been connected successfully. The next thing we want to do is go to general settings. And the first thing you'll see is the encryption area. And then of course you get that warning again that says that you cannot change your encryption details without losing all of your data. It should show you the information that we just set up. The next section is your backup behavior. We can define our database backup behavior. You have two options. We can only backup the custom slash plugin tables selected below, which you can select them by clicking a check next to the one that you want to backup. Or we can backup all of the custom slash plugin tables except those selected. And what I want to do is to back up all and I am not going to select anything below. You can set up databases to exclude and file systems to exclude, but we want to back up everything and click Save Settings. The next thing we want to do is go to the backup link at the top of the page. And because we are getting ready to update our Instamember plugin, we want to start a manual backup. And we can select our backup options if we want to just do our database or our database and our file system or maybe even just our file system. But for the sake of updating your Instamember plugin, we're going to leave both checked. Your next option is to choose your backup type. The first option is online, which it sends the information to the vault that we just set up online. You can do a local backup, which generates a downloadable full backup, and you can store it locally, which is on your website. Or you can have your backup sent to you via email. And then, of course, you'd have to put in your email information if you want to use email. So it's up to you whether or not you want to do it online, local, or via email. For the sake of this training, we're going to do online and we're going to click the Start Manual Backup button. If you look, you can monitor your activity and see that it's starting your backup. Depending on the size of your website, it may take a while, so please be patient. And if you have something else to do, you can always navigate away from this page and the activity will keep going as long as you don't close it out. So if there's something else you want to do, like open up another page, you can do that. Once your backup has been successfully completed, you'll see a notification. Now, if you want to double check, simply log on to the 
vault that we set up. Go to the left navigation bar, click backups, and as you can see, our file has been downloaded. So that's the first method for backing up your WordPress website. Second option I want to show you for backing up your WordPress website is using cPanel. Log into your cPanel account and we want to scroll down to files and click file manager. We want to select home directory and click go. So we select public HTML, scroll up top and click compress. We can select the compression type. I typically use zip and then click compress files. Once those files have been compressed, they'll be stored here on your server. After those files have been stored on your server, you can right click and download them to your computer. So that is a second option for backing up your website. Once your website has been backed up, we want to go back to the WordPress dashboard and click on the update tab. We want to check Insta member and click the button that says update plugins. We've received a message that says the update process is starting and then another that says Insta member has been updated successfully. So now go to the left navigation bar, click Insta member. And if we look to the right hand side, we'll see that we no longer have the old version of Insta member because our update was successful.